Good evening and welcome to ECISD Live. My name is Scott Murray and I'm the superintendent of Ector County Independent School District. And it's a pleasure to have you with us this evening. Choices, choices, choices. Do we have choices? I know in our lives every day, uh, we're surrounded by choices. You go to the grocery store and you have all of these choices in the cereal aisle. Uh, but in public education, we also have a variety of choices, specifically in ECISD, we're going to dive into that tonight. Uh, we're looking at our choice schools, so 13 different schools that represent a variety of choices we have tonight. We're also going to look at programs within some of our schools. We have choices and options for our students, and we're going to uh, take a look at those tonight. So we have an action-packed show, a lot of video tonight. We've done a lot of interviews to get ready for tonight's show, and we have some live guests uh, with you, with us tonight, and you'll have a chance to see those folks. So we ask that you sit back, relax, absorb all of this this evening, uh, learn as much as you can about the choices. If you have questions as we go through, feel free uh, to use the chat feature. We're broadcasting live on Facebook, on Twitter, and on YouTube. Each of those has its own separate chat feature. So if you have questions, again, as we go through, uh, we've got folks that will monitor the chat and be happy to provide responses to those questions about the choices, choices, choices uh, that we have in ECISD. So to start us off tonight, we have uh, one of our leaders of our choice uh, movement in ECISD, Chad Krausen. He's going to share uh, some words with us and talk us through uh, the choices that we have in ECISD. So Chad, we'll turn it over to you. All right, having a little bit of technical difficulty with the audio. Let's see, we may cue that up and try that again. So give us just a minute. If you were a lip reader, you did really well during that segment, but uh, that's not me. So I kind of want to hear him. We'll give it just a minute, see if we can correct that. While we're waiting, I will tell you a little bit about choice. We actually tonight have two of our students that are graduating from uh, Odessa, uh, Odessa College right now. There is Chad. Let's see if we can hear him this time. Oh, still can't hear him. We'll have to, we'll keep working on that. But like I said, uh, literally right now, two of our students are graduating from Odessa uh, College uh, at, at, to receive their AA degree uh, and will graduate from ECISD with a high school diploma at the end of this school year. So one of our choice options in ECISD is to enter the early college program, and that is our high school juniors and seniors earning college credits. In fact, in this early college program, they earn enough credits to graduate with that AA degree from Odessa College even before they earn their high school diploma. So the interesting piece is, especially for moms and dads, when the, 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 these kids graduate from high school, not only will they have a high school diploma, uh, an AA degree, that's two years of college already. So when they go to college, uh, they'll actually begin as juniors and can uh, can continue just for two years and earn their bachelor's degree if they so desire. And all of that is free of charge. Um, and so we and get incredible opportunity to earn that uh, degree program. So let's see if we can pull Chad up one more time and see if we can hear him.
Mm. The beauty of technology. We love it when it works and have challenges with it when it doesn't. Um, so we'll try him again. Let's see if we had him live, we wouldn't have these issues perhaps. So Chad, if you're out there somewhere, maybe we can pull you in live in this segment. So let's see what we can do. Mm -hmm. Oh, still no sound. No sound. So we'll we'll keep working on that um, and see if we can get sound. A couple more things that, uh, about choice parents. If you are uh, interested in the choices and the choice school options that we have, our choice application process is now open. Uh, you can visit the ECISD websites, website um, at www.ectorcountyisd.org and um, access all of our choice school options. Learn about those and then fill out your uh, choice application, uh, parents, if you're interested. Um, so while we work on those technical issues, we're going to go ahead and jump into our first guest. Um, and uh, so I would like to invite one of our just high school students to join us at this time. Um, and he really represents one of our choices. Uh, at Odessa High School, we have an international baccalaureate program, uh, which is not um, a, a full school choice magnet program, but is more of a of a program that we have within one of our high schools. And we've had uh, IB at Odessa High School for several years now. So Jesus Figueroa is, is joining us. He is a senior at Odessa. Oh, I see you've got the Letterman jacket on too. There you go, representing tonight. Good job, good for you. Uh, thanks for joining us tonight. It's a pleasure to have you. So international baccalaureate, you know, two really big words. Why don't you, what is international baccalaureate? So um, from the way I see it, it is a uh, program that has a bunch of advanced classes that gives you, uh, well, first of all, prepares you for a college life. Mm -hmm the old experiences that you need to know like for example the research we get a lot of help on research from presentations mm -hmm. writing essays so yep. it does give you it's a program that gives you a lot of uh, advanced classes and then those advanced classes do teach you how to survive college yeah oh, absolutely so you said it's a uh, is it pretty rigorous and so uh, kind of like you know we, we have some kids at the high school level that take advanced placement courses would you compare international baccalaureate courses to advanced placement courses Yes, I think they're definitely able to compare like to okay. each other. Uh, although I haven't uh, experienced the advanced placements classes, so I wouldn't be able to tell you for sure if we do, they do the same work that we do on the IB program. But probably uh, from the same, from the level of rigor perspective, perhaps they're they're similar in nature. So what? Why IB? It, did you you came as a freshman to Odessa High School for the IB program? Yes. So, uh, I, uh, well, the main reason it's going to be kind of funny because uh, before in middle school, I only had one advanced class being algebra one. Mm -hmm. So I didn't necessarily had like the experience of having advanced classes other than just that one class. And uh, I was invited. I was invited uh, to be in the IB program. And I was like, I I'll give it a try. It's something, yeah. it's something fun. It's something interesting. So I just decided to give it a try once I got and, invited. And look at you today. Good for you. Good. So what, what makes IB unique? Yeah, you know, Odessa High School has 4,000 students, but um, a, a small number of students participate in the IB program. How, how is your program and your day different from the rest of the students at Odessa High School? Well, uh, then let's start by saying the, the, the amount of people in the classroom is definitely different from a normal classroom since uh, right now we only have uh, about 15 students in a classroom. And that's oh, wow. usually, yeah. And, and the thing about the program is that we, uh, all the students in the program share classes. So uh, you see all the same students in every single class that you have, except mm -hmm. for like different kinds of things. So that's one thing that makes it different that it, all the people in the program have the same classes. So you do see them like daily, not only, not only like seeing different kinds of people, like in different periods of sure. the day. Yep. Um, it also, it has uh, extra classes extra classes like one called uh, TOK well which is short for a theory of knowledge yep and this is where we learn about like different kinds of knowledge type of questions and, and different kinds of stuff 
The, this program also provides you with the help to do a research paper, yep. uh, which is called the EE or short for extended essay. So you get to do research on uh, whatever topic you want, you want that it's uh, well appropriate to the rules, of course. So the, those two things uh, are what differentiates it from normal classes or other advanced programs. Yeah. Yep. Well, also, oh, yeah. Sorry. Uh, we also have uh, this uh, community well, no, service community service program that is called or CAS, which is part of the IB program. It involves uh, it's you kind of write down your experiences through different kinds of service or just experiences in general. Definitely, like under one criteria. Yeah. No good. Favorite class as a part of your IB experience. What do you enjoy the most? Definitely our class. <laughs> oh, really? So, yes. what, so the, what's your career path then? You're gonna be the the world famous artist someday, the next Picasso, or what's your what what's your hope? Oh well, so that's definitely Plan B <laughs> in case okay. that the first one play, uh, fails. Um, plan A is uh, to go to Texas Tech and try to get a civil engineering degree. Oh, interesting. So your art and your engineering, you, that that's fascinating. What 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 type of art is your favorite? Do you drawing, painting? What, what do you enjoy the most? I definitely enjoy uh, drawing. That's do what I have do. the most experience on. I haven't really experienced the rest of the artworks or mm -hmm. I, art types, but I do definitely enjoy drawing. <laughs> oh, good, 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 good. What advice would you give? So let, let's say we have an eighth grader watching tonight, and he or she is interested in the IB program, what advice would you give them so that they could be successful in this opportunity? Okay, I will definitely start by saying that um, IB does require a lot of, uh, what should I call it? The determination and uh, will to be able to like to do the amount of homework and uh, assignments that they're, you're, they're given to you. So uh, definitely you will have a, a better, ex an easier experience if you are like a gifted in the writing, in, in, yeah, in the writings, like mm -hmm. writing different kinds of essays. If you like research, reading, I feel like that will give you a, a better experience, Although, but you don't necessarily have to have them. As long as you have the will to like yeah. work, to, uh, to work in different kinds of areas, because you do have uh, advanced classes on all your general areas apart from whatever uh, other extra class issues. So yeah. definitely having a lot of determination to do what you need to do or, or what they're telling you to do. That's interesting. So that work ethic uh, is pretty important, obviously. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good, good, good. And you clearly have it. You've enjoyed your experience and obviously you're successful. So, uh, so good for you. Uh, good for you. Good words of wisdom. All right, uh, Jesus, we appreciate you being with us tonight. Thank you. Um, and, and good luck to you uh, at Texas Tech. Been accepted already? Are you waiting for acceptance or what's your status right now? I just have I got it accepted like I think uh, two days ago. Yeah. Oh, well, congratulations. Good for you. Good for you. Thank you. I did. Was that your top choice? Yes, it was my top choice. Oh, good. Oh, good for you. Well, congratulations. Uh, I'm sure a little bit of relief. It's fun to get that acceptance letter and know where you're going. In your next yeah, definitely. So, uh, we look forward to following you and your journey. Um, as you continue uh, at Texas Tech and then the world, uh, the sky's the limit for you. So congratulations. Good stuff. And go Broncos. Go Broncos. <laughs> All right. There you go. All right. Thank you. So International Baccalaureate, uh, a, a, a challenging academic, a very rigorous program offered uh, to all students in ECISD at the high school level. Um, any student living in any location in Ector County has an opportunity to apply for the IB program. Once accepted, you would begin uh, that program your freshman year at Odessa High School. So a uh, pretty exciting opportunity. Again, more information on the ECISD website, application process, as well as information about IB itself. If you're interested, you can learn more there. So shifting gears uh, from IB over to CTE, our career and technical education program. We have a lot of choices uh, within that, that, uh, that program. In fact, uh, we have the expert with us this evening, Carla Byrne, is the executive director for CTE for uh, Ector County Independent School District. And she certainly knows a lot about career and technical education and has served our kids for many years and hopefully for many more years to come. So Carla Byrne, thank you for joining us tonight. 
And I think Carla, you're muted. I was muted. <laughs> hey, it's, it's, I think it's going around tonight. It's contagious. Dang technology. <laughs> I tell you, we Thank love you it so when much. it works. Thank you so much for having me here tonight. I'm super excited to share about CTE. You're welcome. So let's start with the basics. What is CTE? Um, and then where is CTE in ECISD? So CTE, we love our acronyms and education, stands for Career and Technical Education. So we are working to prepare students for high skill, high wage, high demand occupations. And in doing that, um, we, we have a large focus on both dual credit, that's where students earn high school and college credit at the same time, at no cost to students, by the way. The district pays all of those tuition and textbooks fees and industry-based certifications. Some are state level, most are national, and so students can go anywhere in the United States with these certifications and go straight to work, which is super useful for a lot of our students like me who had to work through college. Yeah. CTE yeah. is all over the place, Dr. Mary, to answer mm -hmm. your second question. Mm -hmm. We have um, CTE in um, five middle schools. We have it in all of our high schools, including our choice high schools. And we have four satellite campuses where students from OHS Permian and NTO travel. And so those campuses are Frost Tech, which is located out on South Grandview. And at Frost Tech, we house welding, auto collision and repair, and construction tech. And then we share the building at New Tech Odessa, NTO, with them. And we have the entire upstairs um, consists of health sciences, um, fashion design, culinary arts, um, and then we have audio video production, early learning, future teachers of Odessa, which we're very excited about. Um, future teachers of Odessa allows our students to earn up to 78 semester credit hours towards a bachelor's degree in education. Um, additionally, we have an ag farm. It's a, it's a very well-kept secret. I wish it wasn't. Um, it's out on West Dunn. It's a wonderful facility um, where students are engaged in FFA and all of those activities. Um, we have a veterinary certification program. We're graduating students who go right to work in vet, as veterinary technicians. Very exciting. Um, and we have, um, we consider Odessa College one of our satellite campuses because we send a lot of our students there, hundreds every day for dual credit academies, such as the Firefighter Academy, the LVN Academy. And our last satellite campus is OC Sewell, which is a new partnership um, that we started last year with OC. So we've moved all of our auto tech students from Frost Tech to OC Sewell. So these students have the opportunity to undergo an experience utilizing state-of-the-art equipment in a state-of-the-art facility. So they are going to be super competitive with their peers when they graduate. Yeah, it's interesting you, you, you talk about that. So our career and technical education program really prepares kids for uh, opportunities in the world of work, you know, post-secondary opportunities, um, and then ultimately the world of work. But we have some of these programs really give kids, to your point, um, some, some not, not only, you know, on-the-job training, but they they're using the tools that you would find in an in industry. So they're super prepared uh, to be successful. And, uh, you know, Sewell Tech, you know, Colin Sewell and his partnership with OC really embraced uh, ECISD and, and allowed us to be a part of this incredible building that was built on 8th Street. Tell us a little bit more about what, what happens in that space, what programming is in there, and then what opportunities kids have? Yeah, so almost every single student um, is enrolled in dual credits, open to all of them, and of course we cover tuition, and they are all working towards an ASE certification. That stands for Automotive Service Excellent, Excellence, and they can get up to, up to 10 of those. And so it's really incredible. They're also working on the Ford Asset Program. So when they, um, when they leave our, our program for high school, they're already sitting in the same classrooms and utilizing the same lab spaces and the same equipment that they'll be using as college students when they, of course, naturally matriculate to enrollment there to finish up their degree in automotive technology. So um, they are going to be super marketable. We're really proud of these kids. How many pathways do we have in ECISD? When I say pathways, how many uh, different pr programs do we have? We have so many you can hardly count, but there's out of the 15 that the state offers, we offer 14. Good, good, so good. We have so, a, wide, a wide array. Yeah, 
a lot of options for kids and middle school as well. So they, this isn't something that kids can do just at the high school level. They have these opportunities at middle school as well. That's right. And to your point, I'm so excited to share with you guys that we have really been working so hard. I want to give a shout out to Kayla Couch, our science coordinator, and Dr. Nanez, who's been um, helping us with this um, endeavor. But we have really expanded our, our reach with students in middle school for both robotics and computer science. And, you know, these jobs um, are, are so, uh, so pivotal right now in our community. And there is such a tremendous shortage of qualified individuals, specifically with coding. So we're very, very excited to have these programs now at, at many of our, our middle schools, and we're working towards full implementation um, this coming school year at the, the rest of our middle schools. Carla, I think we, we have a little bit of video that I know we shot at uh, some in some of our programs. We're, of course, we don't have audio because we're having that technical difficulty, but we're going to bring up a video. If you could kind of give us a, just a little taste of what we're seeing yeah. as we go through some of these more interesting programs that are offered in ECISD. Again, choices for graduate. Um, so I actually, Carla, let, let, let's stop because- Is there audio? For, no, there's no audio, but <laughs> a further bug is that uh, when the video is playing, it mutes our audio. And so oh, no. <laughs> we're not going to be able to, I'm sorry, we're not going to be able to do both at the same time. That's but I okay. think we had, the, the, the piece that we were seeing was, I believe, the Fire Academy. You want to talk yeah. about that? Okay. So the Firefighter Academy is a fairly new facility, also state-of-the-art. And what you saw at the very beginning of the clip is uh, a, a tower that students um, go through a live fire situation. There's an actual fire that they have to, um, that they that they set and they have to put out. Students yep. climb that and they carry, you know, the weights on their backs. It's really terrific. The students in the Firefighter Academy graduate high school, full-fledged firefighters and EMTs. So you cannot be hired as a firefighter at OFR without also having your EMT. So our students undergo the Firefighter Academy all year of their junior year, the fall of their senior year, and then do the EMT program the spring of their senior year. It's an incredible program. No. Again, so they're, they're certainly ready for uh, work in the fire department when they yeah. finish that program. That's good yeah. stuff. Um, so at the high school level, we offer CTE at all five high schools, correct? That's right. You want to, um, I mentioned a little bit earlier that we had a couple of students graduating tonight with their AA degree. You want to talk in one school in particular, OC Techs, offers uh, some pretty focused areas. You want to talk about OC Techs for just a minute? Yes. Oh my gosh. I love OC Techs. So uh, OC Techs is one of four CTE based early college high schools in the state of Texas. We actually won a grant several years back. Um, to implement a, one of four of the first ever. And so it was such a such an honor and at the same time, a huge undertaking, right? So um, I want you to know, so this program is incredible. Students graduate high school um, with having earned a, an associate's degree before they graduate from high school. And there are um, their associate's degrees are CTE, career tech focused. So they can choose between welding, auto tech, auto, auto diesel, occupational safety, business leadership, instrumentation and electrical, criminal justice, and culinary arts. And so is it, these students earn an associate's degree is 60 semester credit hours. And so um, OCA is another early college high school that we have in our town. And you'll note that both of these early college high schools are housed at Odessa College. So we really appreciate our partnership with OC. The difference you're probably wondering between OC Techs and OCA is simple. OC Techs is geared toward a specific 60 hour associate's degree in a career in tech focus. Mm -hmm. OCA students earn 60 semester credit hours, which is an associate's degree, but it's towards a bachelor's degree. Yep. Yeah, no, it, the, incredible opportunity for those kids. And, it, yes. and to your point, you know, OC Techs, one of the first four in the state of Texas. So pre, pretty, pretty, uh, uh, a pretty incredible opportunity that obviously does not exist across the state of Texas, you know, right. just in a very few locations. But again, students in ECSD have that choice um, as, as an option for them. So good stuff. Hey, Carla, thank you for uh, being with us tonight. Thank you for being a champion for CTE and, 
and the thousands of kids that uh, that program serves every single day in our system. If you want to learn more about CTE, you can visit the website. It's on your screen right now. I'll learn more about all of the CTE op opportunities that we have both at the middle school and high school level in Ector County ISD. So once again, Carla, we appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mary. Bye. You're welcome. All right, transitioning from CTE to the fine and performing arts and athletics. Um, incredible opportunities for kids as they uh, make choices and options. And we have um, a, a plethora of options for kids in both the fine and performing arts as well as athletics. And the two experts in the field uh, are joining us tonight. Uh, Tracy Bogart and Aaron Holly are with us. They represent uh, thousands of kids that engage in both the fine and performing arts as well as athletics. So Tracy and Aaron, thank you both for being here tonight. Um, gymnastics, that's a pretty unusual opportunity for kids in ECISD. Tracy, why don't you take us through some of the choices that kids have um, at the middle school and high school level in athletics and ECISD? So let me go ahead and start with gymnastics, Dr. Mary. Um, we are very fortunate in our school district that we start gymnastics um, at the elementary level, and then they work their way up through the middle school level and to the high school. Um, it's it's one of the few sports that can start at that young age and work their way um, through the entire um, K through 12 um, scenario of school. Um, and that's a huge plus, especially with the fundamentals of that sport. But when you look at all the sports that start from the middle school to the high school, you know, we're looking at 15 different sports that we offer here from mm -hmm. football, basketball, cross country, track, volleyball, uh, softball, baseball, swimming, tennis, um, cross country, um, once again, gymnastics. Um, and tennis, it's, 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 it's a huge environment of a lot of different activities that kids can pick from, um, beginning at the seventh grade level. Okay. We actually um, started a sixth grade pre-athletics this year, and um, we're beginning to work a little bit more with the kids on what to expect as they get to the seventh grade. And okay. so we expect to see, you know, huge um, payoffs in the long run um, once once they go through one year of transitioning into athletics and um, with with all the teams, whether it's a, an A team, a B team, sub varsity or varsity, we're looking at approximately um, 131 different teams mm -hmm. throughout ECISD that, um, that kids can gravitate to um, throughout their th throughout their career. And um, right now, you know, we're looking at um, right at about 4000 kids that we're accommodating right now. So it's been a lot wow. of fun this year. Yeah, four thousand kids. That's a lot of kids engaged. And again, is that primarily middle school, high school students, or do you? Yes, that's middle school and high school. Um, yeah. it's there's there's probably a few more in the middle school area mm -hmm. right now, sure. but um, yeah, that's both. Um, it, it it it's big numbers, but um, we want bigger numbers, and so we encourage more kids to get out um and be a part of teams. Um, it it there there's so much to offer out there, and we want them engaged as much as possible because we know that they're gonna you know, move further along and advance um, throughout their career just because of all the things they learn. Yeah, no, that's that that's incredible opportunity. I brought up gymnastics uh, because, you know, not every kid in every district has the variety of choices in athletics that we offer in ECISD. And gymnastics is one of those electives, uh, th those athletic opportunities that is is more unusual. And you, you certainly don't find that in many high schools, but it is available uh, at both Permian and Odessa High School in ECISD. So uh, thank you for, for making those opportunities available uh, for our students. So why athletics? Why, if, if I'm a parent and I'm thinking, I'm working with my middle schooler on you know, being more engaged, why would I encourage them uh, to participate in the athletic program? The number one thing I would say is because it keeps them actively engaged in their downtime. It keeps them a little bit more focused in on what they have to do at school, you know, and why they're at school. But you, when you start looking at the, the leadership piece that, you know, we want to promote, uh, teamwork, just resilience, discipline, the commitment, uh, the accountability, 
um, goal setting, um, the social emotional piece that so many kids are struggling with in school. And of course the character development that we have um, instilled into the actual athletic arena that we want parents to, to realize that this is a plus for them in their corner. And then you have coaches that are going to be there to back that kid up all the way, you know, through school um, from the time they get there until the time they leave um, even, even through the school day. Yep. Yep. Good. Thanks, Tracy. Don't go anywhere. Hold on. I might come back to you. Let's switch gears um, to, to uh, the, the partner with athletics um, is really the finer performing arts. There are many occasions, including a Friday night, in which you'll find both our uh, finer performing arts students and our athletes uh, literally on the same field, um, showcasing their talents in a variety of ways. So, Aaron Holly, thank you for being with us tonight. Thank you for leading that program. Harp. You know, there aren't a lot of places that as a student, you could learn the harp, but in ECISD, it is one of the many fine and performing arts opportunities that are available for kids. Why don't you talk us through uh, some of the options and choices that kids have in this district? Oh, you're, you're absolutely correct. Uh, harp is very unique in our district. Um, and so you have an opportunity, a choice. One of those choice campuses uh, is the Milam Fine Arts Academy. And so the students that go to that academy in elementary are able to have music, art, mm -hmm. dance, and theater. And HARP is one of those programs that you're talking about. Yeah. Um, as you go into your middle school, um, all of our students in ECISD will take fine arts. They take it both in middle school and they take mm -hmm. in high school. And that's, that's a state requirement. And so what we would like to make sure is that your student has the opportunity to choose the fine art that, that appeals to them the most. Mm -hmm. And so as they go into our middle schools um, on our ECISD campuses, and that's Bowie, Bonham, Crockett, Nimitz, and Wilson Young, they all have the opportunity um, to do uh, band, choir, orchestra, and then by seventh grade, they all can do art. Um, also, we have very special programs at Wilson and Young. They, mm -hmm. We also offer dance at that campus. And then if you want to continue your harp or just start harp, harp and theater are offered at Bowie. And so we hope that through those choices, every student can explore uh, creativity, explore working together in groups um, as part of one of those fine arts in middle school and hopefully continue into high school as well. Yeah, you know, we, we do have a variety of just thinking through as you're talking, you know, mariachi is another interesting opportunity that students in ECISD have. Again, it's kind of like gymnastics. It is not one of those options that you find in many schools um, across our nation, but certainly we have it here. And then, you know, the satin strings at, at Permian High School, you know, they uh, just while we might find violin and some other options, just just the. Uh, the, the way that, that the satin strings performs and some of the interesting techniques that our directors incorporate with the students, I think is fascinating. So taking something that may be common and kind of making it a bit more unusual and a bit more interesting and exciting for our kids. I, I appreciate the work um, of our directors and, 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 and teachers at, at every level to make sure that these experiences, what would you lift up as some of the more unique opportunities that our, that our parents may not be aware of, Dr. Holly? Um, I would have to say that as well. And so when they move on into high school, after middle school, in middle school, you're building those those uh, fundamentals. Even in middle school, they have an opportunity to compete and to perform. Mm -hmm. But as, as you're mentioning, as you go into the high school, in almost every program, there are elite opportunities. There's chances to stretch your abilities. Sure. There are competitions. Um, and, and really the purpose of that is to challenge the students to allow them to grow not only in their own skills but also in working to collaboratively collaboratively um, and that's really one of the great benefits of fine arts is the fact that nobody it you know nobody's born playing the clarinet and so it's a skill it takes time and practice and those are things that we hope that the students will take outside of school working hard working hard together as a team and so you just saw a screen um, yes. and that's our phone number and if you have questions specifically about which fine art because we just talked about a whole bunch of options yes, yes. we encourage yes. you to call 
because your student will be part of one of them. So give us a call. If we don't answer, leave a message and we will call back and we'll talk about all of the choices that your student has. We want it to be the right choice for your student. Yeah. You know, and, and, and theater too. We've talked quite a bit about music, but you know, we have a, a very engaged theater program. And, and while some kids may not be the musician, they may have that incredible acting ability. Uh, and, and so theater or set design, you know, our theater program affords kids a variety uh, of different opportunities and um, dance and guitar yep. and uh, art there's both 3d art and 2d art and so there are a lot of opportunities for our kids i was in uh i was at a high school uh, just the other day and actually uh one of the professors who's also one of our school board members uh chris stanley uh ha- was working with some of the art teachers at this high school and and they were um uh they had clay. They were they were throwing clay pots, if you will, and there were potter's wheels all over the um, auditor or the, the the studio. And the the teachers, the art teachers, and the UTPB professors were working with all of these kids, and it was a fascinating experience. But yeah, and this superintendent wanted to instantly become a kid again uh, to to have that experience. It was pretty exciting. So you're right that you pro- you might want to call the phone number to figure out which art. Uh, to be involved is because there are so many. So Dr. Holly, both you and um, Tracy talked about some similar skills that kids might learn as they participate in either the fine and performing arts or athletics. And that was those collaboration skills, that those teamwork skills. Uh, Tracy, wh- why are those important uh, in, in life in general? I think once you step out and just start working with people, whether it's kids, adults, um, the more comfortable you are at being able to um, deal with some of the encounters that you're going to approach, um, it's just easier for you to handle um, when you're talking to people, when you're dealing with people, whether you're whether you're leading, you know, maybe, maybe you are following and you need to step up and, and, and step into the game a little bit more. Um, but the, just the teamwork and, and everything that's involved with it, you know, when you when you start talking about fine arts and athletics, um, the discipline that it takes. And so we know that all these little bitty things that all add up in the long run um, is going to produce a pretty good kid in the long run because they have so many different skill sets that they can work with um, just to get them out into the everyday world that they're, they're fixed in the face, you know, once, once they're, once they're finished with school. Yeah, absolutely. Aaron, any life skills that you would add to that, that kids learn as they travel through fine and performing arts? Well, I would say in addition to what Tracy said, and I know she agrees with this is that, you know, we focus on the whole person because just because they can play an instrument or just because they can do their art, we need them to be well-rounded. They need to be doing well in their classes. Uh, And we encourage them to study. We encourage them to work hard. Uh, We encourage them to stay in their athletics and stay in their fine arts because the more they're involved, the more they get a well-rounded experience. And that well-rounded experience is what they take as they go into either the workforce or into the military or as they go into college. That ability to understand not just the how to play an instrument, but also how to work as a team, how to look creatively and, and perseverance, not giving up, continuing along the path. And, and that's what's so valuable about what we do, both in fine arts and also in athletics. Good. And I think at the end of the day, too, and, and this is always an important statistic, um, you know, kids that are engaged at the elementary level, the middle school level, and especially the high school level, uh, they perform better academically. And so your students, Dr. Holly, you know, your students, Tracy, all, our fine and performing arts students, our athletic students, you know, those kids are actually uh, uh, better students uh, academically because they are engaged. And a great body of research says that. And so moms and dads, as you're paying attention tonight, you know, ensuring that your kids are engaged in, in, in some kind of, of activity is critically important to their success throughout middle school and high high school. So thank you both for being here tonight. Thank you for leading these efforts in our system. Um, You you both serve thousands of kids that that come to school every day, excited to engage in in athletics and the fine and performing arts. So we appreciate your leadership and thank you for both for being with us tonight. Thank you for having us. Thank you, sir. As we transition to another choice, uh, this is a choice that really came to ECISD during the pandemic. 
Um, and it was a choice that uh, it was really the only choice that we had. As many of you remember, in March of 2020, we transitioned from face to face to virtual instruction, uh, not because we wanted to, but because we had to. One of the things that we learned during that time is that some of our students actually prefer to learn in a virtual environment. In fact, some of our students do better uh, academically in a virtual environment. And so we have decided um, as a school system to make virtual learning a permanent part of the choices that students have in ECISD. And so tonight we wanna to talk for just a few minutes about the virtual options uh, that we have in ECISD and maybe a little bit about where we're um, going with that. So Karina Escajeda, she leads, um, and she's new, new in this environment, but leads our uh, virtual school and virtual programming. And I will tell everybody it is emerging. So we're just coming online. So Karina, thank you for being with us tonight. And thank you for leading this brand new opportunity in ECISD. We appreciate you being here. Thank you. I'm excited to be here tonight to tell you um, about our recent choice. And that's um, to join Virtual Academy through ECISD. Uh, that was not initially available when school started. Um, and doc, like Dr. Marie said, there's some students that um, thrive in this environment. They did well in this environment last year. And we're welcoming those students that um, perhaps even because of a medical condition with the student or a family member, they have concerns about COVID-19. So um, we're embodying those students that want to come to Virtual Academy on um, ECISD's um, ECISD Virtual Academy will have a link so that parents can go on and apply. The link is open until December 15th so that um, your student could start January 4th. And um, there is some criteria that students have to meet. Of course, we want students to be successful. And those students that um, were in virtual learning last year, if they were successful in the preceding school year, they passed their STAR test, they uh, passed all their classes, and um, their attendance was good, they are um, they qualify to come in and do virtual learning. So um, there's also, you know, some things that we want parents to be, um, you know, just thoughtful of, and that's a, students have to have good organizational skills to be in virtual learning. They kind of take control of their assignments. They have to be able to turn them in in a timely manner. They have to be self-motivated. And then um, a, a big thing is that they have to be available every day for most of the day. As you know, students are in school about eight hours a day. And that's probably the amount of time that it would take for a virtual learner to mm -hmm. complete the work at home as well. Yeah, yeah. So we, again, to your point, learned a lot during the pandemic. And certainly some of our kids were very successful in that virtual environment. Um, so I'm glad we're making this a, a permanent part, but you described some of those characteristics, you know, virtual learning isn't for everybody. Um, and in order to be successful uh, as a parent is thinking about this option for their, their, their child, uh, there are some personality traits that are, that are, pretty important if one is to be successful. You want to lift a couple of those up again. What, what have you seen just in, in your early um, few months with us that, that are probably the most important qualities and characteristics that a student needs to possess to be successful in virtual learning? Yes, well, uh, we do have some students that have already started with Virtual Academy. Um, they have to get up in the morning just like everyone else does and log in um, to Virtual Academy. They have to start their day there. Um, and they have, uh, um, you know, assignments and all the core classes, electives. The students have to be uh, motivated to get on there. They have to um, be uh, able to engage in um, age appropriate material. Sure. So um, they're, all the material is, um, you know, at grade level. They also need a good support system at home. We know that everyone, including ourselves, needs motivation. So uh, that motivation is definitely needed at home as well. Sure. And um, they also have to get good computer skills, just like we're, you know, struggling with technology tonight. They're going to struggle with technology at home, yep. being yep. able to download items, upload assignments, maybe use search engines to find, um, you know, um, 
you know, some research that they have to do. They have to be able to use the video conferencing tools to talk to the teachers and meet with the teachers. And then also just be proactive in seeking out answers, asking their teachers for questions, asking their parents for questions. Um, maybe even some of their, um, you know, other students and peers in the classes as well. Good. Corinne, is Virtual Academy open to elementary, middle, or high school? Who, who's eligible? Everyone K through 12. Okay. Is eligible. And if yes. they want to learn more about it or find out more information, where would they go? Okay. So the web page, DCISDs, and I believe they have it up. Okay. Um, there have There's some information there. It has um, the criteria that the student must meet in okay. order to apply. Um, it also has some facts and questions. It tells you the skills that the students must possess to be successful. And then finally, the application link is there. When you apply there, um, we'll go through the process of, um, you know, looking through those applications and, and reaching out to the parents and let them know who's being accepted so we can Great. get started. Good deal. So, so parents, you saw that on the website. Uh, it is www.extracountyisd.org slash virtual academy. You can learn more about it, kind of the criteria and also uh, the application is there as well. Uh, questions, they can, uh, again, information is there, how to contact Karina and find out uh, more information specifically if you'd like to speak with her and, and, and learn a bit more um, about this program. But uh, hey, Karina, we appreciate you being with us tonight. Thank you for really making this happen uh, for the students in ECISD. We're early in this. And, and so I, you know, this is a, a, a kind of a first baby step for us as we think about this opportunity. But our goal is to make this uh, an exciting uh, choice for uh, any students, kindergarten through 12th grade in ECISD as we move forward. So again, Karina, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. I look it. forward to hearing from parents. Absolutely. Good stuff. I'm sure I'm sure you will. Incredible opportunity for kids. Um, so that wraps it up for tonight. Parents, we we want to apologize. First of all, we we had um, uh, we have a lot of, of video that we have recorded uh, for tonight's show. And in fact, most of our show tonight was going to be a video that we pre-recorded highlighting our 13 choice schools, um, all of the programs that we have uh, within uh, the um, uh, within the school system. Uh, our commitment is to take all of that video as well as the interviews that we conducted tonight and to put all that together. And we will broadcast that uh, again uh, for everybody to, to watch. We'll also make that available on the ECSD website as well as our social media outlets. You'll have a chance to see that. You'll learn um, all, again all about our choice schools, the 13 different choices that we have. Uh, learn about our AVID program, learn about our, our variety, our advanced academic uh, programming uh, that exists, elementary, middle school, high school, in a variety of areas, as well as computer science. So we now uh, have invested quite a bit of energy in computer science at, at the elementary, middle school, and high school level. And so our, our programming, again, will highlight uh, various components of that as well. So you, you won't want to miss um, all of those video pieces. So once again, we apologize for uh, the technical difficulties we've experienced tonight, but can assure you that all of those videos will be made available. And again, you can find those on the ECSD website, as well as all of our social media outlets will be highlighting uh, those videos. So we appreciate uh, you uh, joining us tonight. Um, happy holidays to all of you. Uh, one week from day today is the last day of school uh, this year for students. And then next Friday, the 17th is the last day of school for our staff members. We'll take a two-week break and we'll return next year, which is January of 2022. We're excited to see you then. Uh, in the meantime, uh, take a little bit of a break. Uh, enjoy your family and friends. Be safe and happy holidays to everybody. Good night. <music>